Next up, guys, we've got Robert the Reaper Whitaker versus the Eraser, Paolo Costa. And Paolo Costa, guys, not in the octagon since 2022. Our man has been anything but in the octagon. And unfortunately for Robert Whitaker, he's coming off that knockout loss. However, I will say we were able to cash in in that spot, right? We were able to finally get one over on old Bobby Knuckles. Drickus Duplessis, uh, you know, was able to cash in in that spot, um, was able to go out there. And, you know, it was Robert Whitaker who initiated the wrestling, the clinch in that spot. And he found out that Drickus Duplessis is just too strong. He's just too much of a horse. He ripped into the ground. He beat him up on the mat. And I don't think that Robert ever recovered in that first uh, round. You know, I think he was kind of uh, sitting on the stool, looking over like, what time is it? Where are we? Uh, trying to figure out exactly um, where he's at. And so I'm saying to myself in this spot, you know, is Robert Whitaker uh, going to be able to get one over on Paulo? I think he should be able to, you know, I, I think that this is a potential bounce back spot for him. When you look at Paulo Costa, Paulo has really not been uh, very active, which is something I don't like to see. I like to see guys that are going out there and competing, getting better, uh, working on their craft. And for Paulo, what we've seen a lot of is um, inactivity. Um, we've seen a lot of joking around. We've seen a lot of, um, you know, pulling out of fights and I don't think the UFC really takes kindly to that either. So I think that's why they're giving him this tough matchmaking. I don't think he really wanted this fight with Robert Whitaker. Also, I just got to stop the chat for one second and shout out to Greenbelt Warrior for the $20 dono. Oh my, thank you so much for the $20 dono Greenbelt Warrior. I got to absolutely cheers to you for that. Cheers to you for that. Greenbelt Warrior, we'll take a sip of coffee in your honor and say thank you so much for the support. Appreciate you being here, and I hope that you're enjoying the live stream. Thanks for making it out. Now, um, the question that men of the library asked is, one year ago, Vocals, the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the UFC. Yes, I was saying it, right? Uh, and he fell off that much. The question is not, did he fall off that much? It's that I think that this fight was an honest fight when he was the pound for pound number one, I think this would have been a tough matchup. I think this would have been an honest test of where he was at, of where Ilya is at in relation to that list. But I think coming off of a loss, it puts him in a tougher spot. I think that puts him in a negative mindset. I think he's a guy that's already admitted that he's had some difficulties uh, dealing with inactivity, right? So now he's rushing back into a tough spot against a young killer who's very hungry and wants this spot. Yeah, I think it's a really tough spot for him. Um, and I think circumstances and timing are everything in combat sports. So for me, that that is uh, really important to me. But back to this fight, you know, Robert Whitaker is a guy that his, his chin has given him flashes, right? Uh, nine and three career to the knockout. But when you look, um, that's definitely been his recent uh, flaw, right? He got hurt in that Drickus Duplessis fight. Uh, the Marvin Vittori fight, he absolutely danced circles around him. That was an embarrassing one. I thought Marvin was going to test the chin. No dice. Um, and then you look at the Israel Adesanya fight. I thought that he went out there and gave an honest competition. You know, he did get hurt in that fight as well. But he really went out there and competed well with Izzy. So I didn't feel stupid for betting the uh, the Whitaker plus 550 decision prop in that rerun. I bet it for small. You know, it wasn't a huge bet for me. But uh, just thought that he was going to compete, make it a close decision. I think it was 48, 47 out of Sonya across the board. I mean, nothing wrong with that for me. Um, so when I look at the uh, Kelvin Gastelum fight, Another one where he kind of won that one easily going away. The Jared fight, he got hurt pretty bad. The Darren fight, he got hurt pretty bad. The Izzy fight, he got brutally knocked out. So you just look, there's been a long run of guys hurting him badly. And so that does make me think, you know, this is probably a fight where I just don't want to get involved uh, because Robert should win. You know, Robert should have the advantage here. But I do just think it's always possible he gets clipped on the chin, right? And I think that when I look at a guy – uh, like Paolo, that's what he brings to the table. You know, he's a big muscle bound guy, but he does have knockout power when he gets people clipped, when he gets people hurt, does normally find a way to close the show on them. Um, you know, so I do think that this is a, a fight where I got in favor of Whitaker. I just think he's got more skills. I think he's more serious. I think he's more committed. I think his training's more real. Um, but you know, I just don't want to count out a guy like Paolo, who's got a lot of physical intangibles, who is a pretty awkward guy to deal with. And who is a guy that uh, I don't think the community's capped very well. Uh, but let me go ahead and double check that. So let's take a look over at Bet MMA. These are some of the things I like to look at. Um, so actually, Paolo Costa, ironically, has been well capped by the community. Um, 
it's just been me, you know? So uh, shout out to the community. Y'all doing a good job on Paulo Costa. He has um, won the community plus 678 units at a 16% ROI. If you've been backing him, you've been making money, you've been fading him, you've been making money. So people have known when to get on and off the train with this guy, Paulo Costa. And we have seen that the favorite has won the vast majority of Paulo Costa fights. So when they expect him to win, he wins when they expect him to lose. He hasn't done so good yet. So I think this is a uh, a fun fight, but I do think it's a fight that's set up for Robert Whitaker to get back on track. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Robert Whitaker here. And I think everybody's expecting him to get it done by decision. Um, but, you know, Paulo Costa in that last fight looked very fatigued against Luke Rockhold. Uh, I haven't liked some of the medical things he's been dealing with outside the cage. And if he's really not that serious about his fighting career, I mean, Robert Whitaker hits hard. He seems like a guy who's pissed off about that last result. And I wouldn't be surprised if he went out here and tried to make a statement. Last time that he fought a serious striker that was trying to kick him in the head, um, you know, Paulo ended up folding up the shop in that fight against Israel Adesanya. So I don't think that that is like a, a lock or something, but I just think that you know, a lot of people are out there touting and expecting Robert Whitaker by decision. And I think that's very possible, but I could also just see Robert Whitaker going out there and knocking this guy out uh, because he's a very, um, you know, he's a very difficult guy to deal with. You know, he throws big high kicks. Um, you know, he, he just has a, a weird style. Whitaker has regressed some in the last fight. Paulo will wrestle him since he was going to wrestle Kamza. Interesting. Uh, Whitaker said in an interview, he wants the KO, man, I didn't even hear that, but that's ironic. Um, cause I, I think that he's going to go for it. Whitaker beat Vittori Costa lost to Vittori math adds up. Yep. Um, I, I, I think that this is a, uh, a Whitaker win and I think he could surprise people with the finish here.